In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the time log module in Job Pro. There are a number of ways that you can create time logs as a user in the system, or even an, an administrator who needs to log time for other users. One of them is simply by going into the time log module, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Another one is that on the quick view screen, on the home screen, we can click on the arrow to view a time log section here. And this is very useful for any users that regularly track time or log time throughout the day. So you can also specify in setup or also at a user level that when you log in, what quick view do you want to see on the home screen? So you could set your settings to display the quick view for the time log section here. So for a specific day, we can then enter in the time logs during that day. And if you've got access privileges, you can change the view to enter in time logs for other users or to view time logs for other users. There's lots of warning related functionality for time logs and you can see here there's a time log entered that's in red and when we hover over the warning it's saying that on charge time for that job is currently 1 hour 40 which has exceeded the specified time to warn of 1 hour 30. So you're now the user's getting a warning visually on screen but also as they create additional time logs relating to that job. So here we can create a time log we can also print the list of time logs for the day but also useful functionality down the bottom part of the screen is for where we can display especially for records occurring today any jobs and tasks relevant to the current user so they can then click on a job line or a task line and auto create a time log for that job or task. So let's create a time log automatically for, for example, this task that's also linked to a job. So now we've got the new time log that's been created. And on this screen then we can specify the start time, the finish time, or just put in an enter time. We can put in the category for the time log whether it's billable or not and also on the right hand side we can enter in some comments and log expenses relating to this time log as well if relevant. So to return back the easiest way is either to click on home or click on the quick view button here but there's also similar functionality for creating time logs in the calendar as well. So let's have a quick look at the calendar. This is similar to what you see on the quick view screen we can add new lines, new time logs. You can edit those time logs from within this screen as well. Or you can enter the finish times, put in a total time, etc. So you don't necessarily always have to go into the full time log module when you're logging time logs. Same on the home screen under the quick view area. So we're getting a warning there now in relation to this task that it's exceeded the budget of time by 22 hours or by 22 minutes. So let's just change the start and end date or times on this. We can click the arrow to set the current time. So every time we set a time or edit that, that time log, it will give us a warning about the budget of time. So if we're working throughout the day on the same jobs, and maybe you're going from one job to the other, and then you want to go back to a previous job you were working on, a simple way then is that you can duplicate a time log by clicking on the little duplicate icon here. But also, if you hold down the shift key when you click on this icon, it'll duplicate the time log as well as the comments for that time log. So if the same comments are going to be used on multiple time logs, well then you can do that by holding down the shift key, clicking the button. Okay, we're, we're also getting another warning in relation to this specific job. And an interesting error that's come up on screen here is that 
the system has tried to send an email message or a warning to a specific user but actually because we've just using a demo version here we haven't set up the SMTP settings properly so to do that we'd need to go into setup and under communications you need to then set up your SMTP settings in here which we haven't properly done you know with a username and password for authentication and, and, and things like that so let's go back and we'll take another look at the time log screen so when we're viewing a full time log screen we can see information like who the employee is the employee type now the employee type can be important if you want to track time on jobs based on the employee type where you can set budgets at a job level for let's say designers you know maybe 15 hours on a job 10 hours for production on a job etc so you can set those budgeted hours now there's a separate video tutorial tracking that whole area of tracking budgeted time based on employee types but just to give you a quick look if we go into jobs and we click on the time log tab we can see this section here budgeted employee time type for this job and if we do a search on a job that has got some details in here and here we can see for example production for this job is set to 10 hours and actual hours is 1 so there's still a variance of 9 so going back into the time log screen each employee in their employee record can be set up to have a default employee type so it means that every time log that's created you don't need to specify the value in this field here and if you do track budget of time based on employee types well then it's important that every time log has a value entered here and you can specify and set up that you can warn a user if they try and create a time log if they're not currently linked to an employee type so then lower down we can specify the start time we can put in an end time by clicking on the arrow or just typing in an end time when you do that it'll give you a warning because in relation to the budget of time again on this time log we've gone over on it and also you can specify the category of a time log there's various reports that you can use for this type of functionality and also whether the time log is billable or not and whether it's been billed so if you're logging times against jobs you have the ability to create invoices using chargeable costs like time logs and other expenses and when they are invoiced out they'll be automatically flagged as billed and down the bottom part of the time log screen we can see what job is related to this time log stage if relevant and task as well if relevant so if a time log was, was logged against a task and that task is part of a stage for a job and obviously also part of the job well then all this information here would be automatically filled in so then the bottom part we can then enter in any expenses relating to the time log you can manually type in some details or you could pick from some product codes as well or service codes and in this case it's telling us this is no stock available for this product but the use for this area would be something like if you're incurring material costs or parts maybe relating to a time log that are relating to a job then this is the the area that you can log those expenses or costs and if there are items that are tracked in stock well then they'll also get reduced from stock using this functionality as well so this task is actually linked to a job and if we view that job we can see on the cost tab any expenses that have been logged on this job and where those expenses came from so we can see some expenses here that have been logged from time logs and we can see the one we just created there So if we go back into the time log module, 
that pretty much covers the data entry screen you can also print expenses from here and then on the list screen you can pull up a found set of records and for those records then you can sort print that list of records as well from here so this is useful for reporting purposes as well but also on the options screen you've got lots of different reporting options so let's say we want to do a report by employee detailed if we click on that then we can specify the criteria for the report we could narrow it down to a single employee we could base it on employee type and lots of other criteria that we want to narrow down the actual data to be included on the report so lots of different time log reports are available here anyway let's take a look at the setup area in the system for all the preferences that you have relating to time logging so we go into setup then into the time log tab and in here now this area is actually covered in another tutorial to do with setup and preferences for time log but we'll give it a quick overview here where you can specify on creating a time log to also display the task number dialog box now what that means is that if you create a time log from say within the time log module itself it'll prompt you immediately to select a task to link to that to that time log and the same option you have if you want to automatically prompt the user to link a new time log to a job okay and then you've also got the option to default the category on every time log that's created or also auto enter the current time as you create time logs and then auto enter the finish time on a previous time log on the creation of a new time log so in other words if you've got a time log open and you're about to start new work you create a new time log well that will actually set the previous time log to with the finish time on it and close out that time log there's also lots of time log warning related options here like some of the warnings we've seen in this video tutorial relating to budgeted time on a task or on a, or on a job that's linked to the actual time log so we can check user assigned to an employee type which I've mentioned that already if you need to track time on jobs based on the employee type well this will force the user to make sure that their employee record is linked to an employee type and also on duplicating a time log confirm if no charge so what that means is that if you've set up a job that when you create time logs for that job that those time logs are automatically set to be billed well then if you've manually set on set that checkbox for a time log to not to be billed and then you duplicate that time log it'll prompt you to specify are you sure you want to set the duplicate of time log also not to be billed as well so it's a good check in just in case the user for forgets and is using the duplicate time log functionality so then there's also a section for display the job task time related warnings so what this does is it turns on the conditional formatting like the coloring of red time logs in the time log portal if there are any issues like where there's time clashes during the day or the time on a linked to a job or a task has gone over the budget of time for example so there's various reasons why you can get time log warnings and this will turn them on and off and also another warning option is that if there's no comments entered on a time log so if you go to create a new time log and you haven't entered comments on a previous time log then you can also get a warning for that as well to fill in your comments and then the last section is covering tasks where you can specify to warn a time log user so if there's any tasks linked to a time log that has gone over the budgeted warning time well then the time log user will get a warning or they won't get a warning if you turn that off but also as we've seen where the system here tried to email a specific user you can set which user you want to get emailed relating to warnings to do a task time logs so let's return back in and the next screen that we'll take a look at is the time log tab in jobs so this is another section 
that's very useful in relation to time logging where in one place you can use it for you know maybe administrators that need to track you know the overall time on jobs see what's budgeted what's left in the budget when to get warnings etc you know setting up the budget employee type time that we've discussed also but also in here you can also create time logs for the specific job we're currently on so for some users of the system it suits to actually log time directly on the job records themselves instead of putting in you know like using a, a daily time log screen that's on the home screen and in the calendar so for for example if the jobs that you do that could be out on site or you might have engineers that go out on site and you don't get your time logs maybe even until the end of the week or at the end of every day well then it might be easier to log the time directly on the job screen as opposed to doing it on the daily screens all the functionality on this time log tab is actually covered in more detail in the relevant job video tutorial as well as the a separate video tutorial that covers tracking budget employee type time but it's in here that you can specify you know to warn time log users for a specific job email the job manager when there's warnings and also email a specific contact as well and you can also set that every time a time log is created it should be set as billable and what default rate per hour to use so if you leave this blank it means that it uses the employees default rate per hour that comes from their employee record and you can also specify that when you create a time log and link it to this job that it'll prompt the user then to link to a specific task that's linked to this job and that's really useful if you need to give say time log reports to clients and you need to break it down into a much more detailed level you could you could then have all your time logs linked to tasks as well as jobs and that will give a lot more information on the reports so just to finish off if we take a look at the calendar screen here we can have and see a time log tab for a day week or month so this can be useful if you want to get a quick overview of all the time logs for a given day week or month and you can click on a time log then to view the details and you're brought straight into the time log module so that covers all the time log functionality in job pro